Welcome to lockdown vlog number 18. Today in the Netherlands, a beautiful day, as you can see. And today we're going uh, downstairs. And there's something else that I would like you to see. Because last night I passed the 700 subscribers. So thank you, all of you. Um, and today it's a little bit about my day and now this is my little room that I've been showing you a few times before um, if I look at all my videos that I have placed on YouTube and I look at which one has been watched viewed the most it is actually this one and not my big system upstairs which is of course interesting maybe a bit of a disappointment for me i don't know but um well that's the fact this is apparently more interesting than um what i have upstairs so a quick tour um is i have my wall with all the physical media right over here and you can see there are some open spots over there because this was filling up much too quickly so i had to make sure to make some room and i'm busy doing that that's why you see all these stacks of cds and all kind of other things lying around over here now of course over there is the wall of records and there you see the same i am making space in this rack also as you can see over here there's a lot of these big boxes and i want the complete top covered by those boxes and those records as you can see i am taking some out and seeing is this something i'm going to play any day soon or not and if not, they will be changed to another room to make some more room for the things that I'm more often uh, using over here. My um, Nakamichi tape deck. Because over here I have the GVC double tape deck uh, reinstalled. I tried to sell it, but nobody wants it. So that will probably be stored right up there for some time until somebody wants to buy it. And then the Nakamichi will be going right over there. So here's some more of those boxes with beautiful music. Another stack of Blu-rays, DVDs, a book and some uh, CDs that I got recently so that's what I'm doing I'm in the middle of changing all these things and because of this uh, YouTube channel and all the reviews that I'm doing you see the lin over there um, oh wait the small lens over there that I'm using for the reviews there's the den audios that I'm using every now and then uh, right over there um getting this stuff in and out upstairs downstairs also makes a little bit of a mess over here because when i built this room what i like to do is good cable management but now when i have to plug and unplug everything every time um, it becomes a bit of a mess so this is the perfect time to uh, to reconnect to this room and make sure that all those things are being made again and I have all my treasures here and I was thinking well what shall I show you guys today um, well here's something that I would like to show you let me pick out this wonderful record this is an opera um, is this a better angle yeah the, let me turn off the upstairs light is this better uh, probably so this is a beautiful box. I like these kind of boxes. They are beautiful, beautiful music. And there's something that I would like to show you. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to 
have my camera focus on the camera angle and focus on what I want to show you. This is a nice Decca um, edition. This is some uh, 50 years old. And when you open it, you'll be greeted first with a nice little uh, booklet. And in this booklet, you, because this is quite a substantial uh, booklet. And what they did in those days is just give you a lot of information about who is singing, who is conducting. You have some, mostly of the original posters that were used to announce these um, operas. There's some beautiful artwork about the... Um, let me put on the light again. About the original costumes. One of wonderful costumes and wonderfully painted. And then you have the story of the opera completely explained what is it that you are actually listening to here's a fragment from the um, the opera and some more dramatic scenes that will help you if you are listening to the opera you have these text the story and the pictures to guide you throughout the um, the opera a synopsis right over here and as you can see it's not just well it's about this and this in just four lines no this is almost a complete book to just describe what the opera is about and then we have a um, index of your uh, side one side two three four five this opera is being played over six sides of record so uh, three records in total another picture sir walter scott and then what you get is because opera is a story on music so they are talking in singing and what you have here is act one scene one you have all the text that has been uh, it's like the subtitles you know but in the original language the italian of course which was the big thing in opera and then you have the english translation because not everybody is uh, fluently in Italian and in some of these books you get a third row where there is uh, German and sometimes even French so because this is a long and here we have some of the pictures of the singer who is the lead star in this, Miss Sutherland, another one right over here from this actual opera that has been uh, recorded. Here's some more beautiful costumes that they have, and compared to a CD, um, you get so much more than only the the music a lot of pictures a lot of text and then we have the end of the opera of course um, and this is from 1972 let's see is there more and this is also quality paper this is not cheap this is thick um, shiny this is good stuff some more costumes from the opera yeah look at this this is beautiful now, whether you like it or not this is not what they do in a CD inlay uh, nowadays so is there more oh of course all the singers and the 
performance from this opera with a little uh, biography and some information on all these uh, people and then we have the end and of course what are all the pictures about and this is a Decca recording and they of course made wonderful wonderful recordings throughout the years but there's another thing that I would like to show you because you have this wonderful uh, booklet and then you do have the uh, the records in their sleeve come on come on the records in their sleeve this is a nice Decca record but this is what I wanted to show you because most of the times you buy a record you have a white sleeve but these people were really interested in having you make the most out of your sound so they had a lot of texts as you can see and these were like a guide some instructions in order to make sure that you keep your record and your um, equipment in perfect working order so here the records avoid damage to the music surface of the record during its removal from and return to the inner bag so they are even concerned that when you take the record out and you put it back in to make sure that you don't damage uh, anything the open end of the inner bag should be inside the outer sleeve so as to form a dust seal okay now i don't know if they I knew that this one was going in a box like this but in a normal record when you slide your record in from the side you should your inner sleeve have the opening on the top so if you slide it in like that and the opening of the inner sleeve is on the top it will give you some extra protection from dust um, so to, uh, to prevent accumulation of dust on the record it should always be kept in its back and sleeve except when being played no records on the floor you have it on your turntable or you have it in the sleeve I like that um, avoid touching the music surfaces and that's what I like we call this the record the record surface they call it the music surface that's much more sweet I like that much more than just record surface um, by holding the record by its edge now not everybody will agree with that one but okay a finger mark will be difficult to remove and will cause dust to stick okay now nowadays we of course have um record cleaning machines like the original disco antistat maybe i'll do a video and that one uh, someday so you can uh, uh, clean it but it's good advice um, that's where we were protect records from all surfaces uh, all sources of heat such as fires I mean really you need to say that you have to keep them away from a fire well okay sunlight radiators hot water pipes amplifiers etc a record left on a stationary turntable may warp badly when subjected to the rising heat from an amplifier is situated under the turntable so they even give you information on where should you place your turntable and of course your turntable should have its own spot and not be right on top of an amplifier but there should be enough air to ventilate so records should be stored at a moderate uniform temperature away from heat and dust in an upright position without appreciable, appreciable applied pressure that's a real British nice term and without leaning either way so something like this is not recommended they should be straight up that's actually what they are saying and I am trying to achieve that but well it's difficult records may be cleaned with the surface by wiping the surfaces gently with a barely damp soft cloth now can you believe that this 
is what they tell you about how to deal with your record. This is information that they give you. I like that. Um, records whose labels bear the words stereophonic or stereo must be played with a pickup designed for stereophonic records using a sapphire or diamond stylus with a tip radius of between 0 0.0005 and 0 0.007 inch. Failure to do so is likely to result in poor sound and irreparable damage to record and stylus. You know, this is what they are telling you, how thick, how pointy your diamond, your needle should be. This is crazy, man. Um, well, this video is getting long, so I'll, I'll hurry up a little bit because there's one other thing that I would like to show you. Uh, stereo labels will state, stereo label will state if record is mono recordings electronically reprocessed to give stereo effect on stereo equipment. So this is all from the time they were going from mono to stereo. And in that time there were even a lot of people were mad. They saying mono is much better than stereo. And of course they um, reprocessed some of the mono recordings into stereo. And this is what I like to give stereo effects on stereo equipment. Because there is of course no stereo. You have a loudspeaker on one side, you have a loudspeaker on that side, and you get a ghost image right over there. But it is, in all honesty, just an effect. And then, on the other hand, they even tell you about the equipment, how to play it, uh, tracking weight, um, make sure that you remember that only one chipped or worn stylus may ruin your valuable record collection completely. Completely, you know, I like it. And oh, and then there is of course the important notice, which is of course about do not copy this. But this is the attention to detail that I like. So about what they did. And if you have an MP3 file nowadays, there is just no way you can compare that with something beautiful like this just look at this this artwork i i love this record i love this artwork this is beautiful well for me anyways now of course um after the records came other things so let me show you here something else as you can see a box like this and here we also have a box like that. Um, this is, um, I believe, operette instead of opera. I don't know what the English word, uh, word is. But I just showed you how they packaged this. And now they did the same with this thing. So let me open it. You'll be greeted with another booklet. But this is of course not a transition because there are no records. But here we have two well, horrible plastic uh, <laughs> inlays and uh, cassettes. But you can see that they tried to copy, to take you from this is what you are used uh, to. So we recreate this for you in um, the same way but for a different format and well it's hard to there's a little delay in the um, in the camera when I look so here is just another one this is um, the here we have nipper 50 of the world's greatest classics and it does not come with a booklet but they have this wonderful layout where they put all the cassettes in their own little uh, spot having a nice little 
get set over here that you can play. Um, and now this little <coughs> thing with the there's even to do with one hand, even with the left hand. And well, there's some information on on the uh, the songs that are being played, but this, of course, is, does not compare to the wonderful book that you have uh, in here. Okay, so. 20 minutes um, I'm going to stop here I hope you like this little uh, insight in how they packaged things one of the videos and it's going to take months probably one of the videos that I am um, making that I want to make is about all these kind of packaging all the different kinds of packaging throughout the years how they presented uh, everything and what I find interesting is when they transition from mono to stereo or when they transition from record to cassette and how they tried to sell this uh, to you. Um, because I have a lot of things in my collection that I think will be interesting for you. So if you think that is interesting, um, let me know in the comments below and for today well it is friday i believe last friday i said i see you tomorrow but not this time so i see you on monday and thank you for watching